Hi class, today we're going to cover relative prices and income on pages 11 through 14 in your text. If you remember from last time, we were talking about budget constraints and budget lines. Our budget constraint said the price of all other goods times the quantity of all other goods plus the price of food times the quantity of food exhausted our income and that was equation 2.1. When we rearranged that equation into a budget line, we saw that the quantity of all other goods was equal to income divided by the price of all other goods minus the ratio of the two prices, where the price of the good on the horizontal axis was on the top and the price of the goods on the vertical axis was on the bottom, multiplied by the quantity of food was equal to our budget line. And we had some numbers to turn this into something that was more alive, where we said income was equal to $40, the price of food was equal to $8, the price of other goods was equal to $4. And we could find the y-intercept. We could also find the maximum quantity of food if we purchased only food. And therefore, we could draw a budget line and find out the maximum quantity of food and all other goods that the family could purchase if it exhausted its income. Now what's important today, or right now, is to look at relative prices and what that means. Indeed, this is the slope of the budget line. The other thing that we're going to look at is what happens when income increases or decreases, and you'll see that income does not enter into the equation for slope. Therefore, a change in income will not change the slope of the budget line. So a change in income will only change the location of the budget line. And a change in price, either the price of the good on the horizontal or the vertical axis, will change both the slope and the location of the budget line. So let's go back to a graph and we'll see whether or not we can identify what will happen when the price of one of the goods changes. Now note, we have two goods, so the price of food could change or the price of other goods could change. Now in our class, we always put the own good on the horizontal axis. And that's how we're going to end up doing our analyses when we add preferences to this equation. And we find out what quantities the household is going to prefer given a set number of prices and income. So again, QO is equal to Y over PO minus PF over PO QF 2.4. And we said Y was equal to $40, PF was equal to $8, PO was equal to $4. We could find the Y-intercept by saying 40, or income, over the price of other goods, or 4, was equal to 10. And we could find, if you remember the little trick we did, that if I set the maximum quantity of goods of other goods equal to zero, then I could see, say Y over PF was equal to the maximum quantity of food I could buy. And that was five. And connecting those two lines, and that's supposed to be straight, would give me all the possible combinations of food and all other goods purchasable by the family if it exhausts its income. Now what we're trying to do now is to look at what is the slope of this line. It's negative PF over PO or 8 over 4 equals to equals 2 saying that you can purchase twice the number of you can purchase twice as much food for every quantity of other goods, or food is twice as expensive as other goods. 
you would have to give up two units of food in order to get one unit of other goods, or you can give up one unit, two units of other goods to get one unit of food. So let's see what happens if we were to decrease the price of food by four dollars. The new price of food, or PF2, is equal to four. What does that do to our equation? Well, clearly it does not change the y-intercept because the price of other goods has not changed. It is going to change the slope because the price of food is now 4. The new slope would be 4 over 4 or 1, and it's clearly going to change the maximum quantity of food that I could buy if I don't purchase any other goods. Now we're going to have 40 over 4 is equal to 10. If I have the price of food, I can double the amount of food that I buy. The household has increased amount of purchasing power. I have changed the slope, used to be PF over PO was 8 over 4. The new PF1 over PO is 4 over 4 equals 1. There's now a one-to-one -one trade off between food and other goods. I have changed the slope and the location of my budget line. Now what happens if I were going to increase the price of other goods from 4 to 8? If I increase the price of other goods from 4 to 8, I would have 40 divided by 8 is equal to 5. I have just decreased the consumption possibilities of the household by increasing the price of food. It decreases the maximum quantity of other goods I could purchase if I spent all my money on, the, on other goods and it keeps the maximum quantity of food I could purchase the same. So when I change a price, I rotate around the maximum quantity of the good whose price did not change Notice, in this case, right here, I did not change the quantity of other goods. I decreased the price of, price of food. I rotate around the maximum quantity of the good whose price hasn't changed. If the price decreases, I rotate the budget line out because I can buy more things. If the price increases, I rotate the budget line in because my consumption possibilities have decreased. So, when I change the price of a good, I have changed the slope and the location. Now, let's go back and say that we're supposed to be looking at both changes in prices and changes in income. Again, my budget line. and we had income was equal to $40, the price of food was equal to $8, the price of other goods was equal to $4, and I saw that at those prices an income, this was the budget line, that is the quantity combinations of food and other goods the household could purchase if it exhausted its income. Now, what happens if the household increases its income to $80? Well, Y over PO changes from 40 over 4 to 10 to 80 over 4 to 20. But notice the slope doesn't change because negative PF over PO is the slope. Only income has changed. So if I look at the maximum quantity of food that I could purchase at now $80. That also doubles. And I get a parallel shift in the budget line out when I increase income and don't change the prices. A change 
in income leads to a change in the location of the budget line, but not in the slope. For those of you who are interested in mathematical reasons, notice the slope or negative PF over PO does not contain income, therefore it doesn't change.